Be Creative Crafts and welcome back. So today is February the 6th, 2022, and this is episode five of Off the Hook. Now, when I was making this, I actually recorded this originally last weekend, and I kept saying stuff, and I'm like, I know I have already shown this, but I couldn't find the video on uh, my channel. And so I went back through my videos in my phone and realized that I never uploaded it. So this is gonna contain um, the last works that I did at the end of December and then also all my completed works and works in progress that I have um, for January up until this point. So if you're new here, welcome to my channel. Um, I'd love for you to stick around so please hit that subscribe button and if you click that bell and change your notifications to all YouTube will let you know every time I upload a video. And if you're returning, welcome back. I'm so glad you came back and I hope y'all enjoy this video collaboration, collage, mismatch, squishy squashy, whatever you want to call it, of episode five of Off the Hook. Enjoy! Let me show you what I have been working on. First up, this is not a new work in progress or a new, this is not a new completed object. Um, this is a uh, infinity scarf that I made a long time ago and it's been really cold here and so I busted it out. So if you're interested in making one, you just make it as long as you want. I do have this wrapped three times. Um, I did a, a little undo one thingy here. I did a chainless double crochet foundation round. Do, do, do. And you can make it as long as you want. Just be sure to do um, a multiple of four. So I did a round of double crochet. And like I said, I did do a chainless double crochet round. Then on round two, I turned my work so that everything would line up straight and that my seams would be straight. And then I did two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. Well, actually, I guess technically we're down here. And then the next row is a row of um, double crochet. And I did... Um, two double crochet in the chain two space and then a double crochet in the tops of each of the w double crochets from the row below. And then I just repeated it. Two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet, another row of double crochet, and so on and so forth. So that's that. So if you're looking for a quick and easy um, infinity scarf, that's how I did this one. And then I just wrapped it a few times because like I said, it's been really cold. And when I mean really cold, I mean like we've been getting down into single digits in Tennessee and um, Fahrenheit. And that's cold. That is cold for Tennessee. Sorry, y'all. Cold. Anyway. Okay. So, let me show y'all a few of the things from December. Now, this first thing I no longer have because it was a Christmas gift. And I already gave it to my friend and she loved it. So, yay. I really like when I give something to somebody and they really like it because you never know. Um, but, um, I did do a whole video on this blanket and I will leave the link to that in the description box below so that if you want to go check out the patterns that I used, um, you can, but I really like it. So I'm going to insert like a super quick video right here for y'all to take a look at that. And it's just kind of a scrappy blanket. So I know I posted this on Instagram but I don't know if I actually posted it here. But this is a, another scrappy blanket that I'm working on. This is a Join As You Go C2C. And I'm pretty positive that I've talked about this and filmed this because it was already in here where I do my filming and not in the living room on the couch where I do the crochet. This is my new scrap gown that I'm working on for 2022. This is a Join As You Go C2C. And when I have little balls of scraps left, I've been using them. This here was what was left over from, if y'all follow me on Instagram, you saw I made some beanies for my son um, and his special friend Petra. I made a beanie and then I also made some fingerless gloves for them. And so this is what was, this was what was left over out of one of the skeins of that. 
It's a uh, Red Heart Unforgettable in the color Echo. This is a Joint As You Go C2C, and I've done it in boxes of eight, I think. One, two, three, four. Yeah, in eight. And the reason I did it that way is because some of my little scrappies are enough to make a whole block. And some of them are only big enough to make a little teeny tiny block. And some are big enough to make blocks of, of uh, four, which is what this black one is here. There's a block of four. And then these are just only blocks of two. And then some I have done this way. Made rectangles. But if you've never done a join as you go C2C, um, I will leave a link to um, Fiber Spider is who I used when I first learned this technique. He's who I watched. So um, anytime I do one of these, I like to give him credit because he is the one that showed me this technique. And I hate making lots and lots and lots of squares and then have to go back and hook them all together. I'd rather join as I go. That way, when I'm done, I'm done. The only thing I do have to do is lots and lots of little tails. But I do try to weave them in um, before I go too, too far. So like this side, most of them are woven in. I have already done those. Just because I didn't want to have to go back and do them all. So I, when I got to a stopping point, all the scraps that were sitting beside me that particular day, I used those up. So I don't know how big this bad boy is going to be, but for now, that's where it's at. So this is going to be a continual work in progress. And I'm using my, my K hook. This is like my favorite one. This is what I've been using for everything pretty much. This is a uh, Hobby Lobby's Yarnology. This is a K. I pretty much use a K for everything. Sometimes I'll use a J. I crochet super tight though, so um, a K for me is more like a I for everybody else. Because usually I go up two hook sizes. Anyway, like I said, crochet super tight, but I do love these hooks. So this is my K hook. And as y'all can see, it is getting worn. Look, I was noticing this the other day. I'm starting to be able to feel that right there. So it's time to get another one. May have to go to Hobby Lobby next week and pick up one. Hmm. Maybe. Because I need extras. I have, all, I have several sizes, but like I said, K is my favorite. Okay. Moving on. What else do I have? Um, let me look at my little list. Let's go back to the last project that I completed in December of 2021. Now, if y'all follow me on um, Instagram, then you have already seen this particular item. This was um, also a bag of day pattern and it's her bonbon beanie and I have uh, I made up a pair of fingerless mittens to go with it and I sent it to my son and his special friend Petra out in California and I'm going to insert a picture here of them wearing it and they really said they loved it so I was super stoked and excited um so yeah so this is Peyton and Petra showing off their beanies and fingerless mittens or fingerless gloves, whatever you want to call them. Now the fingerless gloves, I just kind of made that pattern up as I went, but I did use the same stitch combination in the hand part of the, on the back side, the, the flat side, the palm side of the gloves are flat, but then I did use the same stitch pattern that Crystal used in her Bon Bon Beanie on the gloves so that they would match. So yeah, all right. What else have I completed? So while I was making those for them, I decided to make myself a hat and I used, um, I kind of went off of Crystal's pattern um, and I created this beanie. So it kind of has that same look as her Bon Bon beanie as far as it's got the, the smooth band and then texture and then smooth. And I made this one, made this beanie for myself 
And then I uh, frogged the whole thing and went down a hook size because I decided that the first one was too big. So I made it again and I woven all the ends. Now I've just about decided that this one's a little bit too small. So I should have left it alone. But anyway, I worked this top down. Whoop. And up here, I did just all front post. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Front post, front post, front post, front post. All the way around, doing increases, working top down. And then I did half double, I think. But then this next section is kind of like a cross between the rice stitch and the alpine stitch. Okay, so what I did was I did a, oh, there's my seam. Okay, so I turned. So I did a double crochet front post. I did a double crochet and then I did a front post double crochet. Then I did a double crochet, then a front post double crochet. Then on the next row, I alternated it. So I did a front post into the regular double crochet of the row below, and then did a double crochet on top of the front post. So you get this staggered effect, like you get with the rice stitch and the alpine stitch. So I don't know what the stitch is called. The back side looks like that. It's smooth. So you don't have any texture. But I figured you didn't need texture if you're working this beanie in the round. Then I just went back to the half double and then finished it off with front post, back post, front post, back post. And these I did actually go front and back. A couple of rounds of that and then finished it off. So that is this one. Lottie dottie doo. I really love these colors. See, I like my beanies to totally cover my ears. And the other one was like super big. And I thought this one was gonna be perfect because when I pull it down, when I pull it down, it was perfect. But if I have my hair up in a ponytail like I do right now, it pushes it up. So it doesn't wanna stay down. So, but I've already worn this a few times and woven in all my ends, but I may have to undo it and add another round of of uh, front post, back post, double crochets just to make it a little bit longer. So, but that's that. The yarn I used was Unforgettable in the color Sunrise. This is just 100% acrylic. It is a four weight roving style yarn. So, yeah. So that's what I used for that beanie. Okay, now, this one I have started, I've been wanting to improve my Tunisian stitch. I won't say vocabulary. I wanted to learn new Tunisian stitches. Um, I could do the basic, just regular Tunisian. So, Jada at Jada and Stitches, always does an annual crochet along um and for 20 i think she calls it her calendar blanket now i'm not doing mine as a blanket i am doing mine as a scarf and so instead of um bordering out each square each month i'm just continually going on mine so let me show you what i've got so far okay so this was block number one this was January's block, and it's just the standard Tunisian. But y'all, I will also leave the link to Jada's crochet along or to the video number one in the description box below for 2022. That way, if you want to follow along with her and learn how to do these different Tunisian stitches, you can. Okay, so mine is going to be gray and orange, my scarf, because I just love orange. And then this was February's stitch. And they're done similar. They're done very similar. 
and how it is all about stitch uh, hook placement when you're um, doing your first pass. So in Tunisian, you have two passes makes up one row. Does that make sense? So you go across and then you come back. And Tunisian gives you this really squishy fiber, almost like or fabric, almost like knitting. So, yep. And see how this one. Zoom in. And then here's this one. So as you can see here, the the bumps are lined up in a straight line, and here the bumps are staggered. But yeah, so if y'all want to learn how to do Tunisian, go check her out. Now, I've also noticed that uh, Mikey over at the Crochet Crowd has several Tunisian tutorials going as well. I have not checked his out, but I'm sure they're fabulous. So, you could go do either one you want. Like I said, I'm just doing the one with Jada just because um, I decided I would do a year-long project and learn the new stitches all at the same time. And I'd be interested to see what my scarf is going to look like when it's done of all the different stitches because each block is going to be uniform. So I know that my scarf is going to stay, um, square. It's going to stay straight. So, all right. So that's that. Let's see. What else do I have on my list? Oh, okay. So twisted fiber prints started a crochet along and I think they're going to be doing a different one every couple of weeks and the first one they did was the uh drop stitch scarf pattern that crystal again at bag of day uploaded not too long ago so I made one of those to participate in their crochet along um yeah so if y'all are interested they've got a Facebook group for the Twisted Fiber Friends, if y'all are interested in joining in on any of the crochet alongs this year. Um, they also do a weekly um, live on Sundays. So y'all should go to check them out. This is the one that I made. Okay, so here comes a repeat in the info, but I wanted y'all to see the scarf on. By Crystal over at Back of Day. And um, she actually did it as a scarf. It's just, like, it's just like a tutorial. I think it's a scarf. I think it's called the drop stitch scarf. But um, I worked mine up as a cowl. And I made this as a part of a crochet along by Twisted Fiber Friends. So, and they had a two week crochet along. Um, and this is what everybody made. And then we tagged, every, uh, we did a hashtag Twisted Fiber Friend Cowl 1. I believe it was the hashtag. I'll have to double check on that. I will, if it's something different, I'll leave it. But I'll leave the link or the uh, hashtag up here somewhere so that y'all can check it out. Um, but that's what this is. And I used um, a yarn that I got from Hobby. And I wanted it to be a little bit wider, but I only had one skein of this particular yarn. So, but I made mine long enough to where I could wrap it. And you can see all the little sparklies but so I could twist it around my neck. But anyway, so that's this. So this was the, this was one of my completed projects for um, January. So what else do I have? Let's see, let me grab my bag here. Okay, so first off, this little bag I picked up at the Dollar Tree. Um, before they went up, it was a dollar, so it was probably a dollar and a quarter now, but still, I mean, it's just a great little size for a project bag. Now, part of my goals for 2022, this is something that's been on my to-do list for quite some time, and that is to create a blanket that has a stained glass effect look to it. So, I started looking through stitch books, and I came across the Millstone Stitch. That was pretty popular here a few years back, and I thought, you know, that would make a great, simple, um, it's a simple pattern but by mixing the colors just right, you can get that stained glass effect. So that's what I've been working on with this. So let me show y'all what I've got. Okay, now what I'm using is Mandala Ombre. Whoop. And this is the color Happy. 
And if you wanted to do it in a, it does have a self striping effect, but so that is the yarn that I'm using to get the brightly colored things. And then the black is just Red Art Super Saver in black. Now there are several variations on the millstone stitch. Um, some use treble, some use, some don't. So I just kind of went with what I liked. Let me see if I can figure out where my end is here. Boop. Okay. Ta-da! So this is what it's looking like so far. And the reason I went with this instead of like a mosaic, because I thought about doing like a mosaic pattern. Um, but I wanted the back and the front to look basically the same. So this is the back and this is the front. So hold it over so you can see. Back front. But that was my goal. I wanted it to look basically the same on the front and the back. Um, so yeah, so that is that. Oh, and I forgot to tell y'all, I am not cutting at the end of each row. I am just carrying my yarn up the side because I'm going to do a black border. And so it's going to hide all of those um, carries. But you can really see that striping effect that that mandala ombre has. Okay, so that is one work in progress. That's one whip. Okay, now here's another uh, work in progress. And this one was also, I have also shown it um, on my Instagram. I'm going to insert a picture of it or a little short video of it here of where it was at when I was about a quarter of the way done. Okay, so this is where the this is what the blanket looked like when it was about a quarter of the way done. And then here it is at half of the way. And now I'm going to cut back over to the other video and show you what the blanket looks like today. All right, y'all. And now here is where it is today. I am, let's see, almost, I think I'm almost three quarters of the way done with it now. It is growing, 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 growing. It is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And this blanket is also going to be heading out to California. Um, my son asked me, um, I made one for him years ago, and um, a friend of his saw it. I'm out in California and wanted to know if I would make them one. So, la -da 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 -da. so I would say right now this one is probably mm, maybe almost five feet long, maybe, because it's my wingspan. So I'd say it's right at probably five feet, um, and I think it's going to be about six feet long when it is done so that's that so this one's coming right along hey my um, next whip this is actually a knitting whip and I'm not sure that this is ever going to become anything initially I was going to it was going to be a scarf and I was going to change kind of do it the same way that I'm doing with the Tunisian I was going to do a different stitch for each section of the scarf but Y'all, when it comes to knitting, I am a very, very much a beginner. I can knit and I can purl and that's pretty much it. And if I'm being quite honest, I don't like purl because it's awkward. Um, now, I do continental style knitting. I kind of do like a hybrid, really. I don't even think it's true continental. But I do hold the yarn with my left hand. I'm, I'm a righty, but I hold the yarn in my left hand the same way that I do in crochet. But anyway... So this is what I'm using. This is just some yarn that I picked up on clearance. Um, loops and threads, so that'd be Michael's. This is what I'm using. I just had it in my stash. It's called Soft and, Sun Soft and Shiny. And this is the color Parsley. Whoop. And this is what I have so far. So, this first section, make sure I got it turned right. This first section was just practicing on the knit. 
stitch. And then I went into the knit, knit a row, purl a row. And then by combining them with knit and purl, you get the basket weave. So that is what I'm doing with this. And as y'all see, I got this hole here. But anyway, I think this hole here was created when I actually added a stitch, not intentionally, but because I'm doing 50 and ever so often I'll have 51 stitches. So I'll have to go back and I, d I haven't been uh, frogging it back because quite honestly, I'm not sure how to frog back knitting without dropping all of my stitches easily. Now I know that there is a lifeline, but, and if I was doing a big project, I would add those in. Um, but since I'm just practicing, this is what I've got. And these are just some uh, bamboo uh, circulars that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. I am using a US 10.5. or 6.5 millimeter. I don't know if that ever focused in, but so that's what I'm using. Um, I think I have a picture of the package. So if I do, I will insert it here of the knit needy of the needles that I am using. Okay. Let me put this back in the bag and see what else I got. Let me show y'all first these bags. Okay. Ooh, if y'all watched my Michaels haul, uh, from a couple weeks ago, was it a couple weeks ago or was it last weekend? Maybe even the last weekend. Um, I bought these, they were 75% off and my Michaels had restocked all of their Christmas stuff cause they got a late delivery in, but it's actually their big Santa sacks. So I picked up four of these and they have come in super duper handy for these, uh, these blankets that I've got going on. So yeah. So if you're at your Michaels, see if they've got any of these canvas totes left because they're very handy for large projects. Okay, moving on. Another tote. Now this one I am using assorted yarn or assorted colors that I picked up on clearance from Hobby Lobby during one of their um, yarn haul or clearance sales and I'm using the yarn bee baby sweet delight this is a three weight 100 percent acrylic and I'm making a baby blanket and I am using uh, Mikey's study of texture um, pattern and I am just randomly changing up the colors and so far this is what I've got make sure I'm showing y'all the right side yep Do, 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 do. So that is that. I know. Yeah. So, like I said, I'm just using uh, various colors. I did have a variegated mixed in and I didn't like it, so I did rip it back out and swap it out. And But, but that's what I'm doing with that. And I'll leave the link to his tutorial. Um, it also has a written pattern. So if you prefer a written pattern over a video tutorial, I'll leave the link to that as well because mo a lot of the times I, I can read patterns. So depending on where I am and what I'm doing will just depend on whether I watch the video or if I um, read the pattern. I try to watch videos because I know it helps out the YouTube content creators um, when their videos get views. So. I do try to watch the video um, at least one time, even if I have the written pattern. That way, they know and they YouTube sees that I really like them and I like their designs. And so, that's just my way of kind of helping them out. So, if you have stuck around with me for all of this yammer yammering, thank you so very much. I really appreciate it. I, oh, I know I told this in another video, but I... I can't remember if it is actually in a video on YouTube or not, but for Christmas, my sister got me a ring light. So 
if you notice like difference in the brightness of my videos it's because of that and I will upload a or I will add a little snippet so y'all can see the brand and what it looks like pretty sure it came from Walmart I have seen them at Walmart but um, she's also a big Target shopper so she may have got it at Target but I know I've seen these um, at Walmart so now let me show y'all this one thing that my sister got me for Christmas um, I haven't taken it out of the box yet to play with it but when I do um, if you come back one day and I'm all rainbow colored you'll know why she got me a new ring light and look at I'm super excited. This has got so many color options. Look it. That's why I said if you come in and you see me all rainbow, it's because I figured out how to do this. But I'm super stoked. All right, y'all. And that has been episode five of Off the Hook. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm sure it was a crazy mismatch. I know I changed clothes. You know, wardrobe changes, right? Um, so lighting changes, wardrobe changes, you know, all of that. So I hope y'all enjoyed it. Thank you so very much for coming by. I hope you stick around. Please like and subscribe. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye.